Well, welcome back to another analysis behind the news this week. As I promised you a couple or three weeks ago, I said I was going to have one segment on morality. This is it. You know, I quote a lot from this document, the Communist Manifesto, uh, written by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. And in here, they talk repeatedly about changing the old social order. A lot of times people get confused into thinking this is just simply the classes within a society. But they make it very clear in the, solu in the conclusion that uh, they want all existing social conditions overthrown. You'll find that in the last paragraph of the document, so you don't have to search through the whole thing. But a lot of people don't understand the nuances of society and how it reflects on law and our government. You know, a government is based on the society which puts it together. That would seem to be pretty fundamental. But that idea seems to be lost today when we think about not wanting to talk about the social issues, or I don't get involved in the moral issues and that sort of thing. And yet these are the foundations of our system of government. The kind of people that put the, our government together were a moral and religious society. In fact, John Adams said that the Constitution will not be satisfactory for any other type of society, because our society really is self-disciplinary. In other words, we discipline ourselves, and so we have less government as a result. Have you ever asked the question why something is constitutional today when it wasn't 230 years ago? Or why something uh, isn't constitutional today when it was 230 years ago? It's because society has been changing. And this change in the level of morality and society has been changing the interpretation of the Constitution. It hasn't been rewritten in some of these regards, but suddenly the interpretation has been left open to a different level of morality, a different type of society. What we see going on in our country is the elimination of God from the schools, the Ten Commandments, and that sort of thing where even the school children are out on holiday for, I don't know, maybe it's the solstice. Uh, it certainly isn't Easter or Christmas any longer, is it? And so what we see in our schools is this changing of the idea of morality, of the idea of God, of the idea of teaching the Ten Commandments within the structure of our education as my great-grandfather was taught. I have all of his school texts. You'd be amazed at how they uh, quote scripture, uh, how they refer back to God, morality constantly in their lesson plans. Those things are not done today, unless, of course, it's Wicca or Muslims or something like that. But heaven forbid that it be Judeo-Christian in any way, shape, or form, which was the ba very basis for our law system in this country, our, our constitution, and that sort of thing. And so there are a lot of people that say, well, we don't want to get involved in that. But if you don't get involved in it, you are destroying society as it was originally constituted and in the long run destroying the Constitution. I don't care how much you call yourself a constitutionalist. That is open to interpretation today. A constitutionalist today, supposedly, if you go by Supreme Court and other federal court decisions, is someone who believes in gay marriage. Uh, well, if you went back 230 years, you'd find that that wasn't exactly what people thought on the courts or anywhere else. And so this is the problem when you have a change in morality. You have a change in government itself. And that's why these communists want all references to the old social order and what they mean is Christianity and Judaism taken away, overthrown, gotten rid of, because the ultimate aim of these individuals, and they spell it out over and over and over again, is a one world government and no religion outside of worshiping the state. Now, people today think, well, we would never have a pharaoh who's a god or a Caesar who's a god. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting very close to that idea when we think of the state superseding our religion. When the state head 
will have his picture in the classroom, whether it's Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Obama, it doesn't matter who it is, that's dangerously close to what we think of as old pagan things that are passe. It's human nature, ladies and gentlemen. It's human nature. It does not change. What's changing is how that human nature is being used for changing government in our country by the elimination of religion, morality, and that sort of thing. Most of you have probably never heard of the National Monument to Our Forefathers, which exists just outside of the settlement area of the original site of the Pilgrims in Massachusetts. It is carved out of a single piece of granite. It is arguably the largest granite statue in the world. It is the third largest statue alone in the United States. And the statue at the top is uh, called Faith. It's a woman holding a Bible in her left hand and pointing towards the heavens. And that's Faith. And on the four sides of this national monument, dedicated in 1889, are four things, four other statues. And they are liberty, law, education, and, wait for it, morality. And morality is holding the Ten Commandments. Now this is very infrequently visited by people. They don't even know it's there. Most people don't know it's there. Look it up on, uh, you know, on your internet. You'll be surprised at the beauty of this and the dedication uh, that, was, that goes into that sort of a statue. Original concept, by the way, uh, for that statue, that monument was in 1820. It was finally completed in August of uh, 1889. And those are the pillars, if you will, of our system of government, of our liberty, and everything else. Very inspiring. And when you come to the point where you see who actually laid the cornerstone for it, you will be very shocked. Until next week, we'll see you then.